And once again, hi everybody, this is Tom Snyder, and you're on the radio show for Wednesday night, the 22nd of June, 1988, live and direct now from the ABC Entertainment Complex in Hollywood, California. My guests in this hour tonight are two gentlemen whose names are Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera. If you recognize those names, it is well you should, because they virtually invented animation on television. I cannot, in the time I have here, list all the shows they have done for television. Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, The Flintstones, the Jetsons, uh, Rough and Ready. They originated the Tom and Jerry cartoons for MGM back in the 1930s. These gentlemen have truly done it all, and I wish I had five hours, although I know they don't want to stay here that long, because they have truly given us so much great entertainment and so many great hours in motion pictures and on television over the last 35 years. I'm really happy they're here tonight. In a couple of seconds, I'll give you another example of their great talent, but we'll spend some time talking with Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera about the great years they have given America and the world in television and motion pictures. Hanna Barbera on the radio show for Wednesday night. We are back now with Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera, the founders of Hanna Barbera Productions. And Bill and Joe, if I can use your first names, I'm, I can't tell you how pleased I am that you're here tonight. Well, and I really appreciate your coming before these microphones. Well, that's mutual, both want, of us. And I want to thank you very much for being here. No. <laughs> I want to put this in some kind of chronology. You were working at MGM back in the 1930s. I assume That's you right. were together at that time. That's right. right. Yeah. And they needed a new kind of a cartoon. They needed something different. I'm talking about Tom and Jerry, and you That's came right. up with that, the two of you. That's oh, right. How, how long did that take for you to figure out? Well, it was out of desperation. I mean, things, <laughs> things, uh, things weren't going that well, and the threat was that they were going to close the cartoon studio any minute and make a wardrobe building out of it. Mm -hmm. now, this was a regular sword they hung over your head say. and it got real bad and one time then Bill and I in desperation decided to write a cartoon and sketch it and time it ourselves so what characters you know do we do a purple moose or a, or a yellow giraffe or a, or a green crocodile no we settled down on the simplest of all characters that's a cat and a mouse right. and the, the, the reason we had was that you didn't have to have any dialogue and anywhere in the world, they run the cartoon, and they were worldwide. The minute you see a cat and mouse, you know you what's have going conflict. on. Yep. Right, Willie? Yep. That is correct. And so uh, our, our fans said there's no way these guys are going to last more than one cartoon. Uh -huh. Because they've been doing cat and mouse cartoons for years. They had Crazy Cat and Ignatz the Cat. and Felix the Cat. Felix the Cat. And the Terry Tunes, they did 74 of them a week, you know. And... So we did one, and it wasn't called Tom and Jerry yet. It was called Puss Gets the Boot. And we were nominated for an Academy Award the first time. <laughs> then, as, as, as fate will have it, uh, the MGM people decided not to make any more. Let's not put all our eggs in one basket. They said, do anything else. And at that moment, a letter comes in the door from a distributor that says, when are we going to get any more of those? delightful cat and mouse cartoon. Otherwise, there would have been no would Tom have been and Jerry. Yeah. And that's when we call them Tom and Jerry. What is it about mice that makes them such wonderful cartoon characters? You know, nobody in this country wants a mouse in their house. Right. You know, we, yeah. we set traps to catch mice. That's right. Yet we have Tom and Jerry, and Jerry is a mouse. Wasn't there a Mighty Mouse? Oh, yes, yes. there was. Mighty oh, Mouse. Yes. Oh, and, yes. of course, we all know the most famous mouse of them all, which one was that? Well, the, the one upon <laughs> whom the empires in the Florida oh, and yes. California and yeah. soon Paris, France are built. Mickey yeah. Mouse, Minnie yeah, Mouse. Yeah, that's right. Bill, what is it about mice that makes them such great, lovable cartoon well, characters? Well, on the mouse that we had, on Jerry, we deliberately set out to make him a very sweet, sympathetic, lovable little guy. Yep. And uh, when we had the cat pouncing on this guy, we wanted sympathy for this little mouse so that when he did finally trollop the cat, why everyone rejoiced. <laughs> That's right. And oh, yeah. I, I'm thinking here there's another famous cat and uh, a, a cat and bird act, and that is uh, oh, Sil Tweety? Sylvester and Tweety Bird. That is Tweety right. and Sylvester, yeah. yeah Great Sil combination. Yeah, that was a Warner cartoon. A friend of ours, a good friend, Fritz Freeling, did that. 
and uh, Mel did the voice, Mel Blank, of the cat, Sylvester, who had the unpleasant habit of spitting when I he know, talked. I know, I <laughs> know. <laughs> In fact, Mel celebrated his 80th recently. Oh, yeah. And we talked with his son, and they put Mel on for a time, and, gee, he, he sounded terrific, I'll tell he's you. Great. Oh, yeah. He's great, yeah. What a wonderful, wonderful guy he still, is. Still working with I us. Know, yeah. I know, I know. Now, how many Tom and Jerry's were made? Uh, how many original cartoons? Uh, well, I have one count, and Joe has another, and I hope his count is correct. Okay. Because I would <laughs> rather be it that way. What was yours, Willie? <laughs> well, mine remember. was a little less than 100, and yours was about 130 or 40 along in there. Mm. I, th I had the picture of 127 Tom and Jerry cartoons, is what I understood. I thought we did over 20 years. Mm -hmm. In fact, when they said you can't make more than one of them, we just did nothing but that for 20 years you know, until they closed the studio that day. But that's about it, 127 of them. I can't tell you how many people call in here every time we talk about, you know, Tom and Jerry yeah. or Bugs Bunny or Elmer Fudd or anything. I mean, people love those characters. Yeah. And they say, are they ever going to come back to motion picture theaters? Are they ever going to produce any more theatrical animation mm -hmm. like, like those cartoons? And sadly, I guess the answer is no. no. Uh, I think that is correct. Uh, we have often wondered about that same thing, but it just doesn't seem that there is a market for it. just doesn't seem that way. I Yet, think, Billy, Bill, every, every time I've been in a theater yeah. and they pop up a Tom and Jerry or any of the others that were enormously popular, and I know they were competitors of yours, but I would hope yeah. as time passed you are all pioneers in that industry oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, people start, they stand they up, scream. they cheer, they scream, they jump up and down, they, they can't get enough of it. Yeah. Well, Bill and I went through that. See, believe me, there was a time at MGM where every cartoon we made was previewed, like a motion picture. Mm -hmm. We'd go to a theater quietly, sneak in the cartoon, pass out cards for their comments. But what made you feel real good was that when that, they didn't expect it, suddenly... Tom and Jerry cartoon comes on the yeah. screen, and the roar that yeah. would go up yeah. would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So eventually, MGM, Warner's, and the others close their animation departments, yeah. right? And here yeah. again, necessity being the mother of invention, uh, uh, Hannah and Barbara have got to figure out something to do, right? That is right. We, did, were, we were unemployed. Yeah. And uh, television came out. Yeah. Well, uh, let me go back to the Tom and Jerry for a minute. Okay. Those cartoons are still running. Everywhere's in the world every day, and doing fantastically. Four and four, I believe it's Turner. Turner has them now. Do, are they available in home cassette for people? A few yes, of them. Yeah. Yes. A few of them. Yes. What a wonderful present that would be if you could get you know you get them all. Like you know, some people have all the Honeymooners, and some people have all yeah. the I Love Lucys, and some yeah. people have all the uh, Twilight sure, Zones. Be sure and get the ones that we made, and not a few <laughs> imposters that are in there. Okay. You know? All right. <laughs> believe me. Now tell me the difference. Uh, between making animation for tele for motion pictures as you did for MGM and the beginnings of the animation work that you did I believe for NBC when you started with Ruffin. That's right. Okay. That's right. Well for MGM on the Tom and Jerry's this was called full animation and in planning the animation in that you are very meticulous you time every step every eye blink and so forth and so on you draw every frame don't and you every yeah. frame every well every other frame you draw it's all on two turn animation we call it but when you have to go and meet the economies of television you have to change your technique because there was not nearly the money for animation on television that there is for the motion picture. So we devised a method of giving a simulation of almost full animation, but using just a fraction of the number of drawings. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is what made uh, cartoon animation uh, affordable to uh, the television market. It actually revived the business. Bill, mention the difference in price for a five-minute Well, uh, I have to go back in time to, to when we first started uh, producing cartoons for the television. We used to do that for about $1,000 a minute. And we were spending at MGM about $10,000 a minute. So it's a 10 times ratio. Just about ratio. 10 yeah. times ratio. But well, now, over the years, I must say that the cost of animation has increased tremendously. So it's almost the same now. All right. My guests are Joe Barbera and Bill Hanna. We will continue and get to your calls and comments a bit later after these words from our radio stations. <laughs>
why isn't it called Barbera Hanna? Why? It's not alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a bloody fight. Oh, know? no, there no, wasn't. No, no, no. We tossed a coin, and it came out Hanna Barbera, and then we agreed to change it every year, and that became a real nuisance. Yeah, and confusing. finally, we said, just forget the whole thing, yeah. you know. So now it's no problem at all, because I think I mentioned everybody thinks my first name is Hannah. Right. You say. <laughs> and here he is, Mr. <laughs> Hannah Barbera. <laughs> and, of course, when you did this, you had no idea what was going to happen, did you? No, no, not really. No, no, no. You no. couldn't foresee this. No, and also, you know, we, uh, when, we, when we were thrown out into the cold after 20 years, you know, we really had to start right from scratch again. We mm -hmm. thought we were at the top of the heap, you know. Our product had won seven Oscars, and, sure. and we thought we were making very comfortable salaries, children, and all of a sudden, wham, one phone call, and it was all over with, and we had to start all over again. And, uh, so what, did the two of you go for a ride in the car or go and have a, 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 a martini or go over to either? Well, I mean, when, when this happened, what did we, you do? We, we just cried on each other's shoulder sure, for yeah. a while. Well, we were turned down by every, every uh, studio and every agency. They said, it's impossible. We cannot sell cartoons because there isn't any money. There just isn't any money. Mm -hmm. I think the first rough and ready we made, we got something like, was it $3,000 for five minutes? Uh, no, I think we got... Five thousand? No, we. That's right. Three thousand dollars for yeah, five. He's minutes. always crossing yeah. me up. It's yeah. Well, he looks like the money man. I have to pause again for messages. <laughs> yeah. We'll continue with uh, with Joe Barbera and Bill Hanna of Hanna Barbera after these words from our radio stations. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be right back. We are back now with Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera. I got a I got a bucket full of telephone calls from people who love you dearly, but there are just a couple of things I, I I just for my own information, the Flintstones. To this day, I believe that's still on the air. I think it's going to run forever on oh, television. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. and the Jetsons. What a great point and counterpoint you two thought of. Here you have the Flintstones, yeah. prehistoric people, and the yeah. Jetsons, people in the Rocket Age, but that's both right. in family situations. That's right. It's fab How do you get ideas like that? <laughs> Well, uh, and don't tell me hire good people. No, no, no. Bill and I used to create the ideas, and once we got them rolling, then we'd have the story people going, and I would hang in on the story end, and Bill would get the production out or else, you know. And I'll never forget when we started the Flintstones, there was such an enormous job for prime time. And now, I'm sure that a lot of people thought you were nuts. For sure. What, you're going to be Barney sure. Rubel? Are you, what, are you nuts? <laughs> I <laughs> thought we were nuts, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But uh, i got to tell you, I remember being in New York, to try to sell that show. Now, this has never been done before. No one ever did a primetime cartoon, cartoon show. Cartoon, right. Everyone is kind of saying, wait a minute, are they crazy? But it was received well by everybody. So they would, you would have to pitch it. To pitch a show meant an hour and a half of performing and, and acting out the story and trying to convince these buyers. And they all loved them and patty on the back and left no one bought. See? After eight weeks of sitting in New York, during which time, I saw the snow melt in Central Park. I saw the ice go. I saw the swans come back. I saw the buds come on the trees. And no sale. No sale until the very last day at 9.15 in the morning. The ABC people came in, Leonard Goldenson and Danny Melnick and Tom Moore, I believe it was. They bought the show in 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the problem with broadcasting is there's no more Goldensons. And there's no more Tom Moore. That's right. And there's no more Melnick, the other guy you mentioned. No. I, I knew of these people. Yeah. I knew all the great guys at NBC, yeah. you know, when the Sarnoffs yeah. were there. Danny yeah. But uh, that's right. these were the guys that would walk in, and if they saw something and they had a feeling in their gut, they'd say, we'll take that. That was ABC. We'll, we'll, we'll take that. Real gamblers. Yeah, and they real had guys. to be. What else did they have? Yeah. You want to hear something real funny about well, I want to ask I want to yeah. throw one thing about, yeah. the, about the Flintstones. Yeah. A lot of people think that they really are Ralph and Alice crammed in, in cartoon uh, characters. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you at the time when we were asked to make that show, the Honeymooners at that time were about the funniest show yeah. that I ever saw in yeah. my life. They still are still funny. Is. Uh, yeah. They still are. Is. And I still look at them, and <laughs> oh, sometimes yeah. I laugh so hard, I, I cry. cry. Yeah. I, I cry. Yeah. I laugh. I that's like the yeah. one where <laughs> he's going to send the record to Alice because he's been mean to her. Remember? <laughs> oh, where, and and Norton sends yeah. the wrong record. That's but anyway. Yeah. So, Terrific show. Uh, anyway, we felt that if we do a show, we should make a, a show that has two couples 
and uh, we listen to that show and uh, if it looks a little like that it could be influenced by okay. the honeymoon okay yes it could be Wait, mu much happened, much yeah. influ influenced well, by that what, show what, but and I interrupted a story you were going to tell well two things at this point here what the honeymooners didn't have was a stoneway piano or <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't have a polar a polar rock camera <laughs> and they didn't have Ann Margrock came yeah. in to guest on a right, show right we had all that to uh, Tony Tony Stony Curtis and uh, and Carrie Granite we had all these guys I know the story this this is really surprised but us. the Flintstones never had a string of Palopanies did they oh no. I no. love that's no. my favorite show oh the Polo Ponies the Palopanies mm. Pal Rachel I, I don't have a string <laughs> of Ooh. Palopanies Ooh. 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 Rachel <laughs> <laughs> we were we were looking through some shows as we're as we're getting a whole library together for cassettes and all that, and all of a sudden we see a commercial, our, our first sponsor. We had two sponsors, one of them was Miles Laboratory and one was Winston Cigarettes, and in one commercial, Bonnie and Fred are smoking a cigarette. Oh my God! I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe collector's it. item. That is a collector's item. Can you remember when they had a national brouhaha, whether it should be Winston tastes good like a cigarette should, or Winston tastes good as a cigarette should? I don't Ma remember. Oh yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah. No, but that's where I that. went down and pitched the show to Winston to the to the Reynolds Tobacco Company, and they bought it. All right. Now, when I saw you on 60 Minutes, yeah, where they called you the the General Motors of cartoons, okay, uh, you talked about the home cassette market. Right. And you were producing, and I think still are producing, stories from the Bible for home video as well as other projects. That is right. still still that's ongoing? Right. Yes, that it's is still the, going. It's The Greatest Adventure, and I, I personally feel that the stories that we're doing are great adventures. They're exciting. They're as exciting as anything that's on in animation. Let's start with that. And it's fabulous to work on these. And at this point, we're doing our, we just finished our eighth one, The Creation, which is the best. It's incredible to work. And without going into video stores and all, you know how they all mess in there yeah, and they throw yeah, them in yeah, there and yeah. they depress you. We've gone straight to homes, Bible schools, the whole thing, and we've gone over a million three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And I have, we have letters from mothers saying thank you for bringing the Bible into our homes. Now the last thing that I want to know about, uh, Bill, Hanna Barbera's laugh rooms in kids' oh. hospitals. I oh, think yeah. I think you open the one, laughing room. The laughing room. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. called the laugh room. L A F F. Yeah. Okay. It's that, terrific. Go ahead, Joe. T well, the the one that we have opened is down in uh, the UCLA Harbor UCLA Medical. Harbor Medical. Yeah. And uh, that idea is not a new idea, but it has been in the making for a long time. Uh, this has been very well received there, and we now have letters and invitations from hospitals not all over, but a number of them wanting to install these laugh rooms. Yeah. Joe was at the opening of the first one, and I think Joe should tell about how the kids receive this, kids that are oh, really it's, sick. Uh, yeah. It's worth all the time. This is something that we, frankly, donate all our time and our film and our tapes, and we, donate, we decorate the room. We decorate the hall leading to the room with bright colors and happy colors. And when you see the faces of these kids, oh my goodness! Yeah. I mean, here they are. They all they see these these mothers, and the, some of the mothers are only like 16 or 17 years old, yeah. and they have these little children. And suddenly, into the room comes Yogi Bear in costume. Ah. Their eyes light up, and to me, you know, when they watch our cartoons, which we we donate on a two-hour reel or a, or a one-hour reel, and if they laugh. It's, it's medicine. It's better than medicine. Now, Norman Cousins was there for the opening, and mm -hmm. he was wonderful, and that's his philosophy, and that's our philosophy. You two have probably learned something that a lot of us find out too late. It ain't the money, is it? Oh, no, no. You know no. what I'm saying? It ain't the money. No. no. I don't care no, how much no, money no, they no. pay. It ain't that. No. The it's faces the of those kids. Yeah, yeah. And the laughing, yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, God. It's, it's so wonderful to see that. All right. I have a jillion calls for you, but I have to do commercials. We will continue with Hannah Barbera. Bill Hannah and Joe Barbera after these words from our sponsors. One, two, three, yo, Larry. What? Hello? What are you doing? Who's this? Guy downstairs trying to sleep. Oh, I'm bouncing a basketball. I can't sleep either. Yeah, well, do something quiet, okay? Read a book. Good night. One, two, three, yo, Larry. 
Hello? You're still doing it. I don't have a book. I just moved in. There's just me, my bed, my blender, my brother's aquarium, my basketball. Look, pal, lawn. do me a favor, would you? First thing tomorrow, go to Walden Books and join one of their free book clubs. Free book clubs? Look, write this down, will you? You can get up to 15% off books, and right now, new and current members can get up to 25% off because Walden Books is having a big sign-up drive. Wow, what kind of clubs do they have? Oh, boy, there's a book club for kids, uh -huh. a science fiction club, uh -huh. a mystery club, Ooh. a romance club, wow. and a 60-plus book club. Now, good night! <laughs> What are you doing? I'm building. Building what? A shelf for the books I'm going to get from Walden Books tomorrow. I don't believe this. It's true. I think I'll put suspense on the top. Do you have any experience? America building? finds it at Walden Books. We are back now with uh, uh, Joe Barbera and Bill Hanna. I want you to tell me, now that the mics are back in, what you just told me about the meeting at your office today and what you need here to get these laugh rooms into as many hospitals as possible. You know, right. this, the, people hear this thing all around the country, and maybe somebody will hear a good idea. Well, this is a good idea. You bet it is. We were talking about the success of the hospital and a few hospitals that, very few, that are appealing for the laugh room that can afford it. We were thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if we can formalize this, let Hanna-Barbera furnish all of the entertainment, all of the films, the Tapes, Tom and Jerry, right. the whole thing. Yep. But get a corporate, a big corporate sponsor. I'm looking like for General Motors, Ford, General Electrics, some AT&T, some big company. Hold it. Burger King. Burger Kentucky King. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Hey, right. that is the kind of sponsor. I mean, Ronald McDonald's. Mc, Mc, well, McDonald's yeah. got the Ronald McDonald that's houses right. for, for moms and yeah, dads, so they're right. into it in a big way. That's but right. Kentucky Fried Chicken, anyway, Super. Right. Yeah. we need a big corporate sponsor that would... Uh, furnish this to hospitals that needed it. If they could see the looks on the kids' faces when they see Yogi Bear in costume walking into this hospital <laughs> and look at the films and these poor little six sick kids that are really are, are really fighting sick. for their lives they're right. fighting for their right. lives this would be to me one of the greatest things that a big corporation could do. We'll furnish the pictures yeah, you'll do the entertainment. We'll do too, that. But we'll you, do that. But, but you need some help with the with the we, drapes. That and the, is and the, right. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they would certainly be recognized at every laughing room that we put in. It would be sponsored by whoever that corporate sponsor would be. That's a good idea. It's a very yeah. good idea. All right, gang. Here we go. Here's Diana in Houston, Texas. Hi, Diana. Won't you go ahead, please? Good evening, Tom. Good I evening. missed you while you were on vacation. Thank you. Fred did a great job. Mr. Hanna and Mr. Barbera, you're smarter than the average bear. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right, you're hired. <laughs> I'm 29 years old, and I'm still a kid. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> and my favorite cartoons you ever did were the Jetsons of Flintstones, especially the vacuum cleaner elephant. Oh, God, And yeah. <laughs> And Top Cat, if you ever put those on VCR, I would go buy them tomorrow. Well, they'll, they'll soon be out, the Top Cat, and we're also, we just did a feature, Top Cat in Beverly Hills. Great, and how many Top Cats did you produce? About uh, 24, I think, at the time, and they've never gone off the air. Okay, I knew it wasn't very many, but I, I got up early whenever they were on and watched them. Well, good night. S write us a note or a letter. We'll send you, we'll send you a souvenir of some kind. Okay, great. Thanks, and Diana. Are, are you li ever looking for voices? Yes, all the time. <laughs> Great. All the time. Where do we write? <laughs> well, you see, I do them all. <laughs> no, just write what to Hanna Barbera Studios, Hollywood. Okay, great. Thanks, Thanks Diana. If you Take need it. a volunteer to wear a yogi suit, no problem. Oh, all right, good. Thanks, Diana. Thank you. Bye, bye. bye. Good. Here's Dan in San Diego, California. Hello, Dan. Good evening. Hey, Tom. If you want a dog, I've got a 13-year-old dachshund here that's more than willing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right now. I like doxies. They're fun dogs. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Yeah, to. I do too. Yeah. Listen, I've got two questions for you, sir. All right. Um, one, why towards the end uh, was there a voice with Tom and Jerry? I noticed in some of them it might have only been one or two words. Yeah, well, that's a very sore spot with me. This is Joe. This is Barbara speaking. What MGM did foolishly, I think, at one point, is let a couple of other people do some Tom and Jerry's. And they foolishly, again, I repeat, put voices on Tom and Jerry, which was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And that's how it happened, but we never did it. Okay. And Believe me. My other uh, comment was that I noticed on CBS uh, years ago, I don't know if they're still doing it, they had another series of Tom and Jerry, like they're doing with a 
I think it's Mighty Mouse right now. Same mistake. And yeah. yes, it's a, it seems to be almost a ripoff. Version. They were terrible. They were really terrible. I, I make no bones about it because those are our characters. We created them. We right. lived with them for 20 years. The, the series won seven Oscars. And suddenly they let some people do it. They had the faintest idea. And it, it was too bad. What happened to the copyright? Uh, no, well, it, see, it was owned by MGM, and they were able to, to assign them to anybody they want. Stupid is the word yeah, for it. Yeah, But I'll tell you one interesting thing. Right now, we're finishing up the first draft of a major Tom and Jerry feature for motion pictures. Yippee. Yeah. <laughs> Yippee. And, and I hope it, uh, the turn of broadcasting people yeah. have the right sign. One other quick question. Where can we write about this uh, corporate sponsorship? Uh, uh, you mean to, uh, to who? Uh, yes, where can we find out more information? Well, if you write to Hanna Barbera in uh, in Hollywood, California, we have a man that's on that whole project, and he works day and night on it. Well, good luck, gentlemen. And I just, enjoy just your work, and I wish you good luck. Please do that. That sponsor is very important. Thank you, Dan. Here's Joe now in Providence, Rhode Island. Hello, Joe. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. One thing for you, I really miss you. I used to enjoy the Tomorrow Show immensely. Thank you. And for uh, Mr. Hanna and Mr. Barbera, I was wondering, why is it that the shows they're bringing back, like Johnny Quest and things like that, the animation doesn't look as great or as good as it used to years ago. Well, that's pretty simple. When we did it years ago, we did it for prime time. And prime time pays a lot of money to produce them. When you're doing them for syndication, you are always on a limited budget, and there's no way to get around that. We try, and we, we keep improving. But keep your eye on it, because we have a major feature coming up with Johnny Quest. Well, it seems the same to me, though, with even the Scooby-Doo's. As the years went on, yeah. the animation wasn't as, as, as defined. Well, that uh, again becomes budget and time pressure. It's a very, very tough business. I like to spend about two hours with you and explain it in detail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one last question. What is going to happen now with some of your characters now that uh, Dawes Butler has passed away? Well, I tell you, Dawes was an absolute genius, and he was the kind of a man that would do six or seven voices at one recording. Mm -hmm and be speaking to himself back and forth. What we will try to do is, he had a disciple, several of them, that was doing, that was working with him, that, that, that sounded just like him. We will try it, but if we can't do it, then we're not gonna go forward with it. All right, Joe, thanks for calling. Who are some of the people, <clears throat> and I have the list in front of me, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, Bill. Some of the actors, names that people would know, who worked for Hanna-Barbera and did voices for your animation product. You had some big people work for you. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Anne Margaret is a, a, a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Curtis is a big one. Uh, Mel Blanc is a big one. Dawes Butler is a big one. Frank Welker is a big one. Uh, you name some of the others. You Joe. had Debbie Reynolds. Yeah. She she yeah. Won, she did Charlotte's Web for us. Uh -huh. She even called up and said, "I'll do it for nothing." Yeah. She loved it so much. <laughs> and you said, "Okay." We had Ag <laughs> yeah, we had Agnes Moorhead. <laughs> Anx Moorhead and and Paul Lynn, who was absolutely genius, fabulous. genius, yeah. yeah, terrific. He was he was the rat, you know, and I'll never forget the spider saying to to the rat, she says, I he says I, I need some help. I need you to do something for me. And he says, Oh, that's in it for me. You remember Paul <laughs> yeah. Lynn? Oh yeah, <laughs> fabulous. You do a very good Paul Lynn. I was Lynn, going by to say way. you do that very well. well we Joe. had we had Lauren Green. We had we just finished in the creation. We used Tim Curry as the serpent. Uh, he just he was in a musical, he was in mm -hmm. the Rocky Horror Show. Sure. He does the best serpent in the garden you ever heard. It's fabulous, you know. There's so many of them, and that's the... I want to list your current projects. Uh, you have a new Yogi Bear series for fall syndication. That's right. Uh, the Misadventures of Ed Grimley. Oh, uh, yeah. Animation and live action for Saturday yeah. morning, starring Martin Short. Right. Uh, the Return of Scooby-Doo, Saturday mornings on ABC. And uh, that's, you that's called a pup called Scooby. That's him as a puppy. Okay. My title says a pup named Scooby-Doo. Same, same thing. Right. And you're releasing the creation, episode eight, yes. in Hanna-Barbera's Greatest Adventures, uh, which will be released in July of this year. That's right. All right. Now, right. let me pause here for these messages, and then we'll continue with as many of our listeners as we can. We'll be right back after these words from the affiliated radio stations. Ace is the place. Hey, Ace sure is a painting place. All the quality you expect at a price that will surprise you. Protect the outside of your home with Ace 7 Star. Their best latex house paint on sale now for just $10.99 a gallon. So visit your participating Ace Hardware store or home center right now while supplies last. Hey, let me tell you, Ace is a painting place for me. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware man. 
We are back now for just a couple of minutes here with Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera. I, ha I told them this in the break. One of my dad's best friends when he was alive and his favorite golfing partner was a guy, so help me, his name was John Quest. Johnny Quest. Johnny Quest. And as I told you, yeah. he shot his best friend's hunting dog one time. <laughs> yai, 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 yai. He thought it was a deer and bang. My old man came home and says, guess what, Marie? Quest shot the hunting dog. <laughs> oh, God. That's no one we know. <laughs> Here is Paul in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Tom, baby. Paul, baby. You got the greatest show on radio. Thanks, hon. Hey, listen, Tom. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm really glad you got uh, these uh, guys, uh, Mr. Hanna and Barbera. Me too, but I've only got a couple of minutes, so hurry along now, uh, Paulie. Okay, um, I wanted to find out, are you, um, are you guys ever going to bring back Space Ghost? Oh, boy. <laughs> we just discussed that Friday. And with luck, we'll have him, because that's one of my all-time favorites. I'm glad you like him. Um, can I do my uh, Yogi Bear impression for Please you? Please do. We wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> Yogi Bear, smarter than the average bear, eh, boo-boo? <laughs> Gosh, Yogi, that's right. <laughs> that's, you're hired, too. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Here, bye. here is Jan now in Tupelo, Mississippi. Hi, Jan. Hi, Tom. Great show tonight. I think so. Thank you. I have a quick comment. Thank, a thank, thank Joe and Bill for the great show. <laughs> thank you, guys. Very thank much. you. I wanted to ask you a question about Johnny Quest. Okay. I'm yeah. old enough to remember it when it came on back in 1964 on prime time. Great animation, great stories. How did that series originate, and what is your opinion of it overall? Well, that series originated with us, and it was another prime time show. We sold it on a three-minute piece of film that was so dynamic, so much action, and mm -hmm. I know they remember the show called The Lizard Men. I sure do. That's what we sold it on, these incredible characters. Boy, what a memory you've got, I tell you. <laughs> and it, it ran as a primetime show, and it is so hot. People call us, when are we going to see more, so we're going to make more. Mm -hmm. It's a great show. I sure do appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Thank Thanks. You. All right. Bye-bye. Thank, -bye. Thank you, Jen. I know you had a story to tell. And I've, I've taken your time away with my listeners, and I hope you'll forgive me, but I just want to tell everybody listening here tonight, you people who are with corporations, you're always looking for ways to help America and help people. And I hope you listen to what Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera had to say tonight about their idea of corporate sponsorship for their laugh rooms at hospitals for kids who need some laughs all across this country. If you're listening, I hope you'll give them a shout or a jingle or a letter or something at Hanna-Barbera in Hollywood, California. Gentlemen, I can't thank you enough for coming on tonight, and I hope sometime you'll consider a re-invitation, because we'd love to have you back. Well, thank you for Be having delighted. us. Okay. We'll come back. All right. Boys. Thanks yeah. again, Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera, on the radio show for Wednesday night. If your radio station is staying with us, we'll be right back. I'm Tom Snyder in Los Angeles, and I thank you for listening, everybody.